Welcome back to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're honored to be joined by our next guest. They are City Current partners, so we know them very well. We have Chris White. He's the CEO and co-founder, and then Brian Rickenbach, who's the COO and co-founder of Chronicle Partners. So how are you two guys doing? Doing great, man. Yeah, great, Jeremy. Thanks for having us. So yeah, let's dive in. Chronicle Partners, you guys uh, do a, an amazing job of managing wealth and helping individuals navigate with their investments and making sure that they have the nest egg, but that they can be uh, able to give as well. So there's a lot to what you do, but give us some background on Chronicle Partners. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, thanks for having us here, Jeremy. Um, yeah, Chronicle Partners was born out of a desire for us to um, to serve folks and make a deep impact. Our, our mission statement is to impact others and inspire change by loving well, speaking truth, and challenging the status quo. And so something that we're deeply passionate about is making an impact on folks. And we, we have a, a keen awareness that the uh, relationships and, and, and life is more than just, you know, in our, in our context, it's more than just, just money. Um, we are all writing a story. And so the story can be really good. The story can be not so good, but we have the opportunity to, to write that story. And the folks that we work with generally want to be really intentional with their wealth and they want to be intentional with writing a legacy and, um, being, being marked by wise financial decisions and a legacy they're proud of. And so that's the whole idea behind Chronicle Partners is we're an independent investment group here uh, in Nashville. And we desire to help people write that story and leave a legacy they're proud of. When you talk about writing the story, talk about some of the questions you all like to ask, because to your point, it's not just about the money. It's what impact mm -hmm. do they want to make? What's the legacy? And so I, I love your heart for not only being good stewards, but also helping to guide them on, on a longer term vision and journey. So talk about some of the questions you all like to ask on the front end. Absolutely. Um, and Brian, please, please chime in where I, where I miss out here. Um, yeah, you know, so, so really when we look at planning, when we, when we look at, at helping folks, we're, we're goals and, and kind of desires driven. We, we want to make sure that we're helping folks reach those, those goals. And again, it's not just all about the money. You know, that when, when you look at legacy, there's, there's, um, as we see it, four main pieces. So you've got your business legacy if you're a, if you're a business owner. So questions we're going to ask is what do you want that, what do you want the transition at some point to look like? What do you want that legacy to look like for your business? You've been working for 30 plus years, blood, sweat, and tears building this business. What do you want that to look like in the future? So we help people cast vision for that. We help them identify risk, mitigate risk, and make a roadmap or develop a roadmap to help them grow and get there. Um, when it comes to individuals uh, with their personal financial, um, with, with their wealth, it's questions like very similar. What do you want retirement to look like? What do you want your legacy to look like? It's again, what do you want to leave to your, to your heirs or to your beneficiaries? But it's even more than that. What are your values? What's, what's, what's your family mission? What's your vision for your family once you're gone? Um, and helping people reach those goals. And the financial piece is really just a, a part of it. Um, charitable planning, I'll actually pass that off to Brian because it's something that we're all super passionate about. He's really good at it. So Brian, right, take uh, it away. Awesome. Yeah, I was just going to add in, I think the most important questions that we asked are the follow-up questions because, you know, a lot of people have very similar goals. Of, I want to retire. But like Chris said, what does that actually look like? Because retirement is different for every single person. It's not 65 and I'm done based on, you know, what the government tells me to do. So, you know, it, it is that follow-up question. What do you want your inheritance to your kids to look like? From a charitable perspective, almost every person out there, obviously, you know, any, anyone connected to City Current has a philanthropic goal. Um, there's usually a passion area that, um, you know, most financial planners, unfortunately, are just going to talk about tax benefits of, of charitable giving and leave it at that. But really, the, the key is, what do you, like Chris said, what, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to do? What do you, it's not, I want to give X amount of dollars to my favorite charity. It's, I want my charity to have, or my passion area to have this impact on the world. Um, so, you know, the taxes are, are just a kind of a byproduct. It's, that's not a reason to give. It's, it's what do you really want to do in the world? What impact do you want to make? 
Talk about right now with COVID-19, obviously there's been a tremendous amount of flux in the market and um, a little bit of a roller coaster ride on that end, but talk about what you're seeing now and then what your encouragement would be to your clients or prospective clients. So give us a little bit of the, the tale of the two coins there. Um, so you're, you're exactly right. The, the market has been very wild with coronavirus. Um, the market hit the, hit the high in February on the 19th, the S and P did, and then it went down 34 percent in about 33 days. And so it was a very wild ride, probably the quickest downturn and the, you know, the quickest, deepest downturn that I think we've seen in the history of the market. And so, but since then the market's up about 45%, uh, still down a little bit from the top, but um, it's, it, it's been an interesting, um, it, it's really, a, I would say an interesting case study uh, for emotions because we have seen literally Brian and I came into the office one day and we said, I think today everybody hit the wall. There was this breaking point that happened at, um, during that, that downturn. I don't remember exactly the day, but there was so much emotion. There was fear tied up into it um, because there's a lot of, there's a good bit of fear and emotion tied up when it comes to money. And so, um, you know, we, we have seen that shift, obviously, with the market doing well. I had a conversation with someone over the weekend. They said, I don't quite understand why the market's doing what it's doing with coronavirus and the political environment and all that different stuff. But um, it, it has rebounded, rebounded very well. Um, and so, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. And that's the thing. The markets hate uncertainty. And so, um, so, so part of our responsibility and part of what we love doing is, is helping people with proper expectations, helping people really understand what's going on, why the markets are doing what they're, what they're doing, but having a very, having, having great intentionality with the plans and helping them develop those plans, which really helps combat some of that fear that, that folks are, um, are feeling. Talk about on your end when you take a long term, and obviously everyone's a little different. And part of that goes back to the questions of, you know, long term, short term, high growth, low risk. You know, talk about some of those variables in terms of matching expectations and then trying to make sure that when you look at the coronavirus, and like you said, the markets don't like un uncertainty. And yet, that's we live in a world with uncertainty. And so, managing all these different expectations to match up, to kind of fit the, the story, as you said, is, is a really important part of what you're doing. So talk about kind of that role of matching expectations and understanding the bigger picture of this. It's a really good question, Jeremy, because I think there are, everyone has their own pre, you know, preconceptions, right? Of aggressive versus conservative. That means different things to different people. And um, we can fall on that trap pretty, pretty easily of saying this is aggressive. Oh, you, you know what that means, but no, that, that's, that's a, that can be really different, you know? So, um, you know, it, it is really important for us. There, there are kind of two, two main things that we always want to speak to. It's, it's that risk and understanding what level of, of fluctuation or, or it can be true risk of potential loss of, of a real loss versus fluctuation in value. So, unpacking what an aggressive portfolio means versus a, a conservative portfolio, meaning that, you know, you could decline this much if 2008 were to happen tomorrow, or, you know, you should, should grow, you know, roughly this amount, you know, year over year over, a, you know, you said long-term, what is long-term, you know, a financial planner is generally going to say 10 years or more, but you know, that, 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 if you're closing down retirement, you know, the long term is now. <laughs> right. So, you know, we, we, we need to tie and we need to help unpack that, that expectation, that understanding of what, what those words mean. But then we also need to tie it to the actual goal because someone might be looking for a conservative investment, but they might need to be a little bit more aggressive or they might think that they want to be aggressive until, you know, February and March happens. And then they realize that that's not as much fun as it used to be. And um, they don't, they might not need to be that aggressive, right? You know, and if, if you don't need to, um, at some point you might say, we don't want to. So we have to tie the need to the expectation and, and the want. And, 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 and generally that means, again, typically 
retirement planning, those things mean cash flow. So tying the need of, we need to be this aggressive to, to generate this much cash flow, but also making sure that you're comfortable with the amount of volatility that that brings in the accounts. So I think that's the, the main thing that we, that we help unpack and it's, it can be pretty complex. Well, just like you said, you know, aggressive uh, means one thing to you and another to me. And it's also another thing when you start seeing the dollar, but understanding that it's value, not necessarily dollar. So I think all of that goes back to trust and relationships, which are really paramount, obviously, for what you do. Give us maybe one thing that is something in your world of investments, and I'll just kind of leave it broad, but something that you think everyone should know that they probably have no clue. So like maybe a, a trade secret, one of your favorite bits of advice, what, what's something that you want to throw out there as a nugget that you think everyone should know this, but they might not know this. What, what's one thing that comes to mind? Hmm. That's a really good question. <laughs> so you can really nerd out on some of the different, you know, <laughs> like however you want to get into this, but <laughs> I'll well, leave it vague for you. I'll take a shot here and then Brian, you jump in too. Um, I, I, the, so the, the first thing that, that came to my mind, so I'll, I'll just say this, um, there's an old phrase that I've heard for years and years that it's proper planning prevents poor performance. And I know that's a very simple phrase when it comes to planning, but I, I think far too often people either try to go it on, you know, do it alone um, or they get connected with someone that is maybe doesn't have their best interest at hand, or maybe they've been given misinformation, or maybe they've been taken advantage of, or wh whatever the case is, and the, the proper planning has not been done. Um, I, we, we oftentimes find ourselves undoing some things that people have done in the past because maybe they weren't advised correctly, or maybe they they did something that sounded really good at the time, but maybe it wasn't or whatever the case is. I think it's important for people to make sure they have a good planner or team that they work with to do the proper planning so that their legacy, that, that, that long-term vision that they've worked so hard for that they want to pass down to generation to generation is actually accomplished. And they've done it with intentionality. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks are sold products. A lot of folks are um, just given just given bad info that that does not lead them in the right direction. So anyway, I don't I, I don't want to, you know, beat the dead horse or whatever the phrase is, um, but that proper planning prevents poor performance. And that's a broad statement that covers a lot there. Um, but I do think it's important. Yeah. Brian, what about you? What would you add? Yeah, Jeremy, you were actually speaking to it um, a couple of minutes ago, but I, I did just want to emphasize it. I, I think speaking to risk and volatility, I, I often make a differentiation between risk and volatility when, when we're talking with folks um, because I, you know, sh in the short term, well, I, I say that differently. We're, we're, we're generally, <laughs> we're conservative planners, meaning um, that we don't really encourage folks to invest in a lot of things that have a, a risk of total loss. Um, but I think that's a really important differentiation when you, when, you, when you talk about risk versus volatility, because most investments that you're going to see in your retirement plans are, they're going to be funds. And a fund is a collection of a lot of different investments. Um, and that diversification means that you have a level of volatility, not a level of, or not a potential risk of loss unless the world ends, you know, because you, you basically own hundreds or thousands of different things by owning even one fund, let alone multiple funds. So, you know, the, the natural reaction in February and March when the market goes down 33% is to say, you know, the world's ending, I need to get my money out, but it, it is a change in value. You actually, you own the exact same investment from point A to point B. It's the, the values just changed dramatically. And nobody wants to hear us say that <laughs> when that happens, but it is, it is absolutely true. And if, if you're not planning to use the money in March or April or, or, you know, or May, and you're going to use it 10 or 20 or 30 years from now, do we think that Apple and Google and Amazon are going to grow in value between now and 2030 or 2040? I do. I can't guarantee that. But, you know, when, I, when, we, when we own all of those different companies, we really diversify out the risk in case Google's the one that goes out of business. You still own... 999 other companies. 
So I, I think that's one thing that we often take for granted. We skip immediately to that, you know, in 2008, your account could have gone down 50% conversation and we don't cover the, you know, you own so many different things. This is a measure of volatility. It's not your, the next time the market declines, you're going to lose everything. As long as you stay in the boat or whatever cliche you want to use, it's going to come back up. Yeah, I, I think that to me is is one of the most important things, especially because when you look at these moments where the stock market is going down and then you hear, well, that actually is a great time to buy because the pricing is lower and the value is going to come back. And like you said, understanding that you're, you're, the value fluctuation is changing, but it's not like you're just losing all that money. It's going to come back. And I think the, the big picture understanding the educational side, like you're talking about, really is critical to understanding, okay, what am I doing with this money? And in the, in the long run, how is it going to match up to meet those goals? And I think to your point, setting the goals on the front end and being very crystal clear, but then managing the education and the expectations then is really where the power really comes in. Talk, talk about kind of that, carrying that forward of, you know, what are you really talking to your clients about taking advantage of right now and just how you see things kind of riding out. I mean, is it one of those where you say, hey, let's really sit down and, and have these conversations on a monthly basis, a weekly check-in? How, how are you kind of navigating it with your clients? So um, one of the things that we've that we said throughout the, the downturn was that there are silver linings to downturns. Um, and to your, to your point, Jeremy, as you said, you know, when the market's down, it's a great time to put additional monies in because you're buying low, right? So the whole adage of buy low, sell high, you can do some really neat, just, this is where we kind of nerd out, honestly, is are, are, are these planning techniques that, that you can do that there's nothing wild and crazy about them. They're very simple in nature and, and extremely effective. Um, so some different pieces would be something like rebalancing a, a, an investment portfolio. Um, there's really not a, a ton to that, except for the fact that you are doing exactly what we were just talking about, which is buying low and selling high. Um, doing things like tax loss harvesting and non-qualified accounts, um, where you can actually utilize these losses that you're experiencing when the market's down, which can help uh, long-term with, with taxes. Um, things like conversions um, and, and converting an IRA to a Roth IRA where you pay less tax because the account's down. And so there's some really cool, very simple techniques that we, that we use that um, unfortunately a lot of folks don't, don't utilize those in times when they make a whole lot of sense, like when the market's down. And so, um, so, so from a, from a guidance standpoint, those are some pretty simple things that, that, that you can do that can really make a big impact for folks and just helping people understand, here's why we're doing what we're doing. Here's some opportunities that, that we have. Um, and then utilizing those, those techniques that again, make a big difference over time. Yeah. I carry that nerding out a little bit further because I, I like this part of it in the sense that there is a big difference between sitting down with somebody and just saying, okay, let's just be wise with your money. There's a whole nother getting into it like you're talking about where it's like, no, wait, let's actually sit down and look at, okay, how can we save money over here? How can we reap benefits over here? How can we save you tax savings over here? Like that's where the big picture comes in of, hey, like we can do all these little things that in the end make a big difference. It's not just, okay, well, let's just take this sum of money and let's just invest it. There's a lot more to it. And I think that's where the nerding out really does pay big dividends. Give me one more example of just, you know, along those lines of something that you think, wow, this is something really cool that we have a chance to do that may not be rocket science, but in the end, it, it, it really helps them get where they need to go. I'll, um, I'll, I'll share one, one quick thing that just popped into my head real fast was um, when it comes to charitable planning, for instance. So something we're super, super passionate about is the charitable planning, helping people give a whole lot of money away in tax efficient ways. Um, and that coincides with estate planning and tax planning investment, retirement planning, they, they all work together. Um, but a neat thing that people can do is when, when they've got highly appreciated assets, so if they've got just take very simply a, a, a mutual fund that's up a lot, they can take that and actually give that away and avoid paying taxes on those gains, but also get the same fair market value deduction they would if they, you know, took $50,000 and gave it to the charity, they could take a $50,000 um, mutual fund and give it to a, a donor advised fund, for instance, 
uh, avoid the capital gains tax and also give a whole lot away. And so there's some just really cool, I want to say simple, but there is some complexity to it, but some really cool planning things like that, just real, um, that can make a massive difference, not just for the client, again, from a tax standpoint, but in this instance, with a, with a nonprofit organization could make a massive impact. Um, and so that's just a, a small thing. Brian, sorry, I, I think I jumped in there quick. That was awesome. Sure. Charitable well, giving, yeah, that's, that's the right answer, just charitable giving. There are a few, there are a few strategies, um, but, but charitable giving is the right one. I, I, um, you know, the, the, other, the other one, just to mention really quickly, is gifting, gifting directly out of your IRA. Um, instead of giving giving cash, once you once you hit um, age seventy and and above, you're able to give directly out of your IRA and, and just not pay income taxes um, on those distributions, which is a it's a huge deal. I mean, it really is because so many folks, like Chris said, are giving just cash out of pocket, which isn't bad. You know, obviously the key is the goal, but we'd love to maximize it from a tax perspective so that either you're keeping more money in your pocket or the nonprofit that you're passionate about is going to receive more money. However you want to look at it, the only one that's missing out is the IRS. And, and we don't speak to too many people who, you know, shed too many tears over that. So um, <laughs> the, the last thing I'll say too is, you know, we were talking about the market environment and we saw, we saw the decline and Chris talked through the silver linings there. You know, I, I think we were talking about the volatility and it's, it's all theoretical until it actually happens to you. We've, I've actually spoken with a, a couple of clients that are nearing retirement. And now that the markets come back up, um, they've, they've kind of had that, you know, that, that slap to the face of the decline. And now is a great time for folks that are, are looking at um, potentially using the money in a shorter period of time. Now is the right time to look at potentially getting a little bit more conservative because the, the time that everybody wants to do it is when the, when the market goes down 30%. But hey, now now it's come back up. It's a good time to reevaluate your goals, reevaluate your timeline, and say, "Hey, I'm I might be closer to using this than I want to, and I don't want to see my my portfolio decline like I just saw it decline three or four yeah. months ago." Well, go ahead and wrap up and talk about where people can get in touch with you and reach out and uh, carry these conversations forward. So, website, social media, phone number, where do we go? Yeah, absolutely. So um, our website, chroniclepartners.com, and it's chronicle, not chronicle, like chronicles of Narnia. It's not like that. It's chronicle like in the Bible. So um, chroniclepartners.com. Um, and then we, uh, uh, LinkedIn, we've got obviously LinkedIn profiles, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, we're just starting that. Um, and then we've, we've got a Twitter account as well. Um, and so, um, and then phone number, my phone number is 615-560-6560. Brian, I don't know yours. <laughs> my line is 615-560-6583. And you can always Google Chris White. He's easier to, to spell than Brian Reichenbach. So yeah, but there's, a, <laughs> but there's a million Chris Whites. <laughs> Well, There's only one we go, right go to about. chroniclepartners.com. <laughs> so go to chroniclepartners.com, make it really easy. C-H-R-O-N-I-C-L-E, chroniclepartners.com. Chris, Brian, thank you for all you do and for coming on the show. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. See you, man.